course, if you haven't seen our game next week, Senior Day, Tulane will also kick at 11 here at the stadium. Uh, I just want to turn it over to Coach Morris. <clears throat> All right, has everybody got me? All right, well, just, uh, you know, I, I think I've said this before, said it after the game. Um, I'm very proud of our players and the way they responded uh, in the second half. That's, uh, that's championship caliber football. That's what we strive to be. That's, that's who we strive uh, to say we are, the way we practice, uh, the way we prepare, and everything we do. Um, it's just unfortunate that, that we were unable to put a full game together like that. Uh, very, very, very disappointed in our first half performance. Um, you know, it was uh, uh, something that I did not see coming. Had no idea that that was even remotely possible would have uh, would have would have uh, challenged anybody that said that uh, that was what was going to happen to this football team especially knowing that we controlled our own destiny and to show up with a performance like that in the first half it was very disappointing um, and uh, that's that's probably a big a big understatement it's disappointing to, to me as the head coach because obviously I, I did not have them ready um, and um, I, I didn't see it coming um, and disappointed that we, we were unable to, to, to find a way at the end of the game to, to finish it. I thought that the effort in the second half um, was, was exactly what we thought we were going to get in the first half. Um, it wasn't so much that Navy did anything different. We had a really strong idea that they were going to make some quarterback movement, and that, that, uh, that they were going to move Malcolm to quarterback. We've, we'd kind of got indications of that as far as just the, they had been searching, um, especially with the injury to, to Zach. And, um, and so we had, we had prepared for, for that. Um, it was a, uh, in my opinion, the first half was, was uh, they, they, their back was against the wall. Um, they had gotten away from who their identity was. And um, they had the will and the want to. And uh, I, I, I think that's really the bottom line. And I think our guys on our sideline walked out with the mentality that, uh, um, that it, was, it was we were waiting on somebody to make a play. We were waiting on somebody, whether it was the offense, the defense, uh, somebody was going to make a play. And then all of a sudden, we were going to feel good about ourselves to have the energy to go play. And um, so that was, that was so disappointing, and, and especially from where we came in our program to where we are right now, and to know in, in two and a half years that you, you essentially were in control of your own destiny. Um, going into the final three games of the season. Um, but shows you we're not there yet. Uh, that's really, it, it, it's bottom line. I mean, uh, the previous two weeks, um, we, we're, we're, we're no longer days away. Uh, we're plays away. And, um, and that's, that's encouraging. Uh, I am very proud of our players, very, very proud of the way they responded. Because if, if they didn't believe in us and they didn't believe in each other and they didn't believe in this program and, and, uh, and if our culture wasn't, wasn't strong, uh, then it would have been a 68 to 22 ball game. That's the way it would have ended um, because we would have just not shown up the second half like we did the first half. But it meant something to our players and it still does. Um, they were extremely hurt after the game as we all were, uh, extremely hurt on Sunday. Um, we had some very in-depth talks on Sunday uh, of, of why. Uh, why now over, over the last four weeks have we not played well in the first half um, and had to rally in the second half to win ball games or rally in the second half and it just wasn't good enough. Um, thought we dug ourselves such a huge hole that we almost had to be perfect in the second half uh, to win. And, um, both offensively and defensively, we had five possessions. And defense had to defend five possessions. Offense had to, to, to play five possessions. And offensively scored four touchdowns and punted the ball one time. Unfortunately, that, with that one punt off of a turnover on downs was, was critical. You had to be perfect. Uh, defensively, to hold a team uh, like that, we didn't call any new defense. There was no defensive adjustment scheme, a different call, a different play offensively. Uh, there was none. There was none that was called. We didn't play with any different players in the second half as we did the first half. Um, and to hold uh, you know, a team like that that uh, had found their, their, their swagger, had found their identity, and to hold them to nine points 
two turnovers on downs and forced a punt with two interceptions. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, what, uh, that, that's what we were expecting the entire time. Um, so very disappointed. We couldn't capitalize offensively in the first half off of, off of a punt. Uh, couldn't capitalize off of interception and a fumble. Just, just couldn't do it. And so, uh, uh, again, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's on me. It's on me as a head coach to, to, uh, to figure out a way to, to get a full game out of all these guys. And uh, it's on our staff to, to, to get each one of their units ready. Um, and we'll do a better job of that moving forward. Um, but I am proud of our players. I, I am. And uh, I love them. Um, and just uh, extremely uh, proud of their fight because, again, um, being down 34 to 11, um, it would have been very easy not to fight like they did. And uh, my message to them at halftime was I don't care if you ever look at the scoreboard again. I don't care how much time's on the clock. I don't care what the score is. That's irrelevant at this point. It's, uh, it's all about just play one play at a time, stack plays upon plays. And if we can find a way to get in the end zone, if we can find a way to get a stop, um, then, then we just keep cutting the lead down. And, and if we're good enough uh, in the second half, then, then, then maybe we got a chance. If we're not good enough, at least we played better than the first half. And we'll have to, to, to pick ourselves back up and, and uh, get ready for this week. And so unfortunately, we were good enough to get back in it. Um, but uh, also, unfortunately, that we were unable to make a stop when we had them second and 15 in, in a critical situation um, and gave up 14 yards on third down and then couldn't stop the dive on back-to-back -back drives. And, and uh, you know, right there at the end, we were trying to let them score. After we burned our last time out, that was our, our – I, I wish, really, that they would have scored on one of those, those busted runs, um, the second one. But uh, our guys were, were, you know, at that point, you're out of field goal range still, so you're, you're still playing for something. But, uh, you know, I, I really felt like at second and 15, um, and we burned a timeout, we were going to get the ball back, we were going to win the ball game. I really, really felt that we were fixing to win that ball game. Um, it shows something about our kids to come back from that far down. And so uh, they did a, re a really good job of uh, coaching their guys up on not to score and burning as much time off the clock as they possibly can. While that was a big risk um, with, a, with a new field goal kicker, it, it definitely paid off. So again, you know, you, 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 you're disappointed in the loss. There are some bright spots in the second half. We got to find a way to play four solid quarters of championship caliber football. We got a great opponent this week. Uh, Coach Norvell's done a great job, um, took over a good program and uh, has done a, done a really good job of, of, uh, of, of assembling a good group of guys together. And, and obviously, they're very deserving of where they are. Uh, I would have loved to have been able to roll into this game and, and uh, still in control of our own destiny. But we don't. that's, that's something that we, we can't control anymore. Uh, but we can't control how we play. And um, we've got a great opponent we're going against, uh, a quarterback that's playing as well as probably anybody in the country. Uh, Riley Ferguson um, is an outstanding competitor. Uh, for two years, he's done a he's done a great job in this conference or an offense. It's uh, I think sixth in the in the country in scoring, um, 42 points a game, 500 and something yards a game, uh, seven returning starters. They've 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 got uh, uh, one of the the uh, Bolitnikov finalists or semifinalists, Anthony Miller, wide receiver, uh, 900 and some odd yards receiving. 67 catches, uh, dynamic player, um, and uh, they got uh, one of the best, the best return man in the country, uh, in in Pollard. He's done a he's done a fabulous job. He's got got incredible speed. Uh, we got our hands full defensively. Um, a lot of a lot of run pass options. A lot of naked's. Uh, they they're very well coached. Um, you know, downhill runs. They got a running back that's close to getting close to a thousand yards. Daryl Henderson. Uh, we're going to have to play well uh, defensively. We're going to have to play with an edge about ourselves. We're going to have to play um, with a with something to prove defensively, and we got to do it for four solid quarters. Uh, defensively, they're a um, a team that returns six starters. Uh, statistically, they may not be uh, at the top in our conference, but. They have done a, a really good job as of late of, um, 
of really putting their, their personnel on the field, and they've had a lot of injuries this year. Uh, and we're going to have to play well offensively. They've, uh, they've got uh, one of what I think is one of the best corners, uh, young corners that I've seen, uh, and Carter Terrell, a true freshman. Very impressed with him. He's got four interceptions on the year. Um, he, uh, he's, he definitely poses a big time problem for our receivers. Um, they've got another, another corner on the opposite side of him and that is uh, uh, Tito uh, Windham, 24 tackles. Uh, he's got uh, three force fumbles, very aggressive in how they play. They get their hands on you. Um, they're going to they're gonna try to disrupt your routes. Um, they've got uh, uh, definitely have shown to do that against uh, some of the best receivers in all of college football. They're not going to do anything different against us. Um, but uh, they do they pose a huge problem for our wide receiver core. It'll be it'll be a, a great challenge uh, for our wide receivers this week um, to see if we can if we can create any separation at all. Um, and we'll, we'll find out. But uh, they do a good job up front of uh, mixing their fronts up. They'll go from four down to three down. They, they do a, uh, a really good job of, um, you know, the, the Avery kid, number six, which is uh, uh, Jannard Avery, um, a senior. He's been, been in this league for a while. He's, uh, he's got 59 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, um, five and a half sacks, a really good football player. This guy doesn't take a playoff. You'll see him moved all. They'll put him at linebacker. They'll put him at end. Um, they do a lot of different things with him, and I'm very impressed with him as well. Um, the leading tackler is uh, Austin Hall, a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. And so uh, he's got three interceptions on the year, too. This is a, a really good football player. Uh, Austin is a, a young man that plays on their special teams. It's very disruptive, and he's, this guy plays – uh, whatever they ask him to do. And so very impressed watching him play as well. Uh, so we've got our hands full, both offensively, defensively. We've got to play better in our special teams. Um, we did not play very well as a specialist group, um, which was disappointing last week. I talk each week about not leaving points on the field. And we left points on the field. We, we missed a field goal. We missed a, 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 uh, a, a PAT, especially after just trying to create any type of momentum at all. Um, and so we, we, we can't leave points on the field. And you, you're going against the division leading um, team that uh, is uh, – they're playing they're, they're, they're playing at a very high level right now. So it will be a great challenge for our guys. And, um, but uh, as I say every week, and, and um, this is a week more than any week I've been a part of SMU and being the head coach here, this, this week more than any is about the SMU Mustangs. And um, – and can our guys show up at 11 o'clock ready to go and, and ready to play? And um, they're going to have a great week of practice. It'll start again today. We'll be back out on the field. So the, the preparation, the how-to will be there. Uh, the will-to and the want-to, it'll be there too. It's uh, just can we, can we put four solid quarters together? And, um, and that's, as their head football coach, that's, that's all I'm asking. Our staff will do a great job putting a plan together. Let's 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 play four solid quarters of football and and uh, focus on SMU. So with that, I'll open up for questions. When you look back at the last two games against Memphis, what what has it been about the defense that has caused difficulty for your offense? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a really good question. When you look at the last two years, uh, the first year was 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 an absolute travesty up there. I mean, it was awful, uh, disappointing. Uh, end of the season, last game of the year, um, embarrassment, um, total embarrassment. And so, uh, you know, that's one of those game films you want to throw away, you want to burn. Um, you, uh, you use it as motivation going into off season a year ago, only to come out here a, a year ago uh, against a homecoming crowd. Um, you know, Mid-October, I think it was, and, and – um, to, to put a performance out like we did, a 51-7 to performance, uh, was very disappointing, very disheartening. Um, we only scored seven points on these guys in two years. That's who we are. Um, we've given up uh, 114 points in two years against them. That's who we are right now. Um, that'll be a, a, a something we've talked about. Um, but I don't think that this is the same team. 
I really don't. I don't think that this is the same team of a year ago. I don't, I, and I know without a shadow of a doubt, it's not the same team of our first year. But uh, I also know that the last two times we've played uh, Memphis, it has not worked out in our favor and really hadn't even been close. So uh, I, I don't know so much if it's what they've done is what we've done. And so uh, that's why the, the whole message this week is going to be about, about us, uh, us, SMU, and uh, earning respect. And you've got to go, you gotta go uh, earn that. That's something you, you have to play at a high level. Uh, and right now Memphis is playing at a very high level. And uh, we, have, we have not played at a high level um, consistently for four quarters. So that's our challenge this week. When you talk about the struggles of the first half, is there any temptation to mix things up in terms of how the pregame routine or do you want to stick to what they've done this season? Well, you, 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 as a coach, you search for anything. Yeah. I mean, anything. You, you, you'll, you'll, I mean, you'll change anything up. I mean, you, you change the color socks you wear, and pants you wear, you, you'll change anything. Um, but, you know, when, when it comes down to it, I, I really think it's a bunch of hogwash, to be honest with you. I, I really do. Um, you know, because what, what's been different in the way that we might have started some games earlier in the year um, compared to where we are right now? I think it's a whole other atom of, a, of another growing process for this program moving forward. Um, you know, I, I, we talk to our players about it all the time. I mean, you know, three weeks ago, do you like the results you're getting? And everybody would have said yes. Well, there's a behavior that you've been doing to cause the results you've been getting. And, and now we're, we're, we're two games, um, the last two games, we don't like the result we're getting. Well, let's, let's reevaluate the behavior through the course of the week. And I don't mean bad behavior. I'm talking about behavior in have you lost a little bit of an edge and how you focus on the little things. Um, have you lost a little bit of edge on when you come into a pregame meal? Are you do you do you feel like you did the very first week of the season when you walked in there that very first pregame meal or that second or that third pregame meal? Or has the routine gotten boring to you? And uh, has it gotten a little old? Have you kind of kind of you know you know four or five months into after Christmas or the, the new toy doesn't have the shine on it anymore? Um, is that is that caused a little bit of the lack of the, the the behavior of not maybe focusing in just a little bit more that you did early in the year? Um, and, and my message is is January 23rd is going to be here before you know it, and there's going to be a 5 a.m. run out here in a cold rain, and and, and and a snow or a sleet or an ice or what, and we're going to be out there running, and you're going to wish you had this moment back. Because there's going to be something that's going to take place over the next couple of weeks in our season that's going to either provide motivation, moving once this season ends, there's always something that you want to build on. And it's going to be created over the next two weeks. There's no doubt about it. And so we're going to be out here on January 23rd in a sleet and a snow and a cold rain running. And there's going to be something that we're going to talk about over these next two weeks that's going to provide some motivation for us. Now, so the the story's still open. The chapter's still there. Um, what's the what's what's the the you know what's the book going to look like when you close the history book on the 2017 SMU football season? What's it going to say? I don't know. We're going to find out. It's a very big contrast for your defense going from a team that ran all but one play uh, last week to an offense that really likes to air it out. Um, is that a challenge to go? No, I, again, I, I, I call bull corn on that too. Uh, it's about playing football. It's about going out and playing ball. I will say this, our defense sees that offense almost every day. Every day, every day. So to go back and forth, nah, no. Hey, it's about one-on-ones. It's about defeating a block, getting off a block and making a tackle. You got 11, they got 11, all right? You, you can only block 10. I, somebody's got to make a play somewhere. It, it can't always be about the unblocked defender is the only guy that can make a play. There is no rule in football that says the unblocked defender is the only guy that can make a play. Um, that's where it comes down to you, you got to defeat a block and you got to be a football player and you got to make a play. Or likewise, when offensively, when you do have the ball in space, it's your job to make a guy miss. That's, that's just kind of the way it is. And, and it may be a guy that fought off a block. Well, good. You can't block them all. 
you got it. You earn your scholarship too. And uh, so no, I, I you know, I, 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 different schemes in the way you prepare through the course of the week, a different offenses. I mean, yeah, you got to you got to do a few things a little bit different. But overall, I mean, it's it's our 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 defense sees this offense every every week, every day, and. Um, that's that's the, the you know the thing that you you really want to get across to our guys is that look this isn't something different, I mean it, this is this is you've you've seen these offenses more time than not and so now go play, so. Yeah. Do you have updates on Kieran Mitchell and JT Williams? Yeah, I fully expect both of those guys to be back. I, I do. I, I think uh, uh, obviously our injury report was pretty big on on Sunday night, um, but uh, that's kind of the way Sundays usually work. Um, you know, I, I, they'll be back. I mean, you know, a lot of guys get off the injury report pretty quick. I mean, you know, some of the injuries are your feelings got hurt. Uh, that's, that's some of the injuries, you know. And then, and then so now it's all about, you know, hey, if you're injured or you're hurt. And, and, and I'll say this every, every week, talk about it all year long, talk it to my own son. You know, everybody in college football right now has got bumps and bruises. Everybody. Everybody's got a, got a hurt. Um, there's a lot of people that are injured. If you're injured, you can't play, and and that's the that's the the, the message is is was when we have trainers. That's when we 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 have doctors. And um, but um, you know this this point in time, late in the season, you're in your final 14 less than 14 days. Um, shoot, it's 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 a want to man. It's a want to and a will to, and uh, uh, and that's what this is going to come down to. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of feelings that were hurt. A lot, a lot of them. A lot of them were because of the performance on the field uh, Saturday. A lot of them because they, they saw themselves on video. So, yeah, I, I, I do think I, if I had a, a hurt feelings report, there would have been a whole lot of guys on that. And uh, But, you know, this is, this is about let, let's, let's go play football. Football is a tough sport played by tough people. What, what was it that took JT and Karen out of the game? I think uh, one of them was an ankle. One of them was a, a, a calf strain. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. I know that. You know, I know that Kyron was more of a. It was his second time, and so it was. He, he was experiencing some swelling, and so they made a decision not to put him back in. And I'm, I'm totally good with that. We don't ever want to put a kid back out there that's that's not been cleared, and we would never do that. And and um, but. Um, you know, with JT going down, um, when he did, I think he got rolled up in there. And, and again, just part of the game. I, I wish, I wish he wouldn't have, because they would have heard the field go out there. The clock would have been running, and, and who knows? But you know, when that happens, it was a 10-second runoff, which was the, you know, that that hurt. But if a kid's hurt, he's hurt. I, you know, you you don't. That's the part of the rule that you just don't like. Uh, a kid that's truly hurt on the field and. And now he gets penalized for being hurt. Um, I don't. I don't think that. I don't like that part of the rule. Um, yeah. So, but it, it was a 10-second runoff, and um, so, anyways, it's part of it. That's the rule. Yeah. Well, it, it was, uh, you know, there was times we had three true freshmen out on the field, and um, that was uh, that was at linebacker. Um, you know, and that's that's tough in a game of, of that magnitude. Uh, it was good to see him make some plays. He's going to be a really good football player for us. Um, and and those were, if there were any highlights in the first half, that was he, he at least provided a little bit of a highlight. So yeah, there was. Obviously, we want to see him continue to grow, and and he will. He's just a freshman, so we're proud of him, proud of all our players and how they responded. So, yes, sir. Uh, you talked about the miscues in the kicking game, uh, the extra point, the field goal. What's y'all's kicking situation today? Well, and 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 and, and I, I was not very. I didn't think we punted the ball well either. Yeah, so um, I was disappointed in our punting. It, it it you know, it looked like he was punting a brick. To be honest with you, uh, very disappointed in that, um, and so those are just things you got to continue to work with, you know. And it's just, you know, you got young guys; those things happen. But but uh, I've seen him punt. I've seen him be one of the top punters in the league. 
Um, it just wasn't that night. And, and he wasn't the only one. And, and Josh wasn't the only one. Uh, there, was a, there, was, there was a collective group. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that, you know, from, from not playing well offensively and defensively in the first half, I think from a specialist group in our kicking game, um, we didn't kick the ball very well the entire game. Um, but I do know this, that the players on those special teams unit, uh, we gave great protection in the, ki in the field goal unit. We gave great protection in the punt unit. We covered the kicks well. Um, we we, we uh, returned kicks for the most part early on well. Uh, so the effort is there. And I'm proud of those guys. So I don't, I don't want it to sound like, man, the whole special teams unit was, was bad. No, 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 no. There was a lot of really good in that. Um, it's just the, the, the main thing is kind of like when everybody's blocking and the quarterback's not delivering the ball, things aren't going good. So uh, it makes everybody look bad. And, uh, but, what, you know, Kevin, Kevin finished kicking. Kevin will kick a, some this week. Um, we'll, uh, obviously, Josh will. We'll still be a part of it and still kicking, but you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rotate it around a little bit a little bit more. And but Josh Josh will be just fine. Josh has proven to be to be outstanding, and so we'll we'll see. You mentioned this is kick returner. How is a dangerous weapon? Knowing that, do you employ a similar strategy that as you did against TCU, where you try to keep the ball away from him? Well, I mean, I, I really don't want to see him running down the field, and, and he's he's returned three kicks for touchdowns this year. And so it's a, uh, you know, I, it's, it's tough. I mean, because the other one's pretty good too. And the other one returned a kick on us last year. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty good himself. So, um, so we'll see. We're, we'll, have to, we'll have to play. I mean, Daryl returned one again. He returned one on us last year. So, again, we got our work cut out for us. It, it's, it's, we're going to have to play well. And uh, it's got to be about SMU. Has to be about us and will be. Anybody else? All right. Thank you.